私の心に渦巻いたものは熱狂そして強烈な嫉妬だった。舞台の上で演じられる眠れる森の美女彼女の演じるオーロラ姫は情熱を持ってターンを繰り返し情欲を煽るかのようにその手を優美に突き出し踊ったなぜなぜこんなにも胸が締め付けられるのだろう彼女の踊るオーロラ姫そのフェッテ・アントルノを見て自分の動かない足を恨めしいと思うのだろうまるで羽が生えているような演技を見せつけられ私は胸の内に尊敬にも似た威夫の念すら抱いていることに気づく。いつしか自分の腕で体を抱きしめ震えを抑えていることにあ,あそして激しい嫉妬の裏側に確かな情愛を抱いていることも私はつぶやかずにはいられない願わくば願わくば私もあの舞台で共に。Suddenly, a line from the Dark Knight Rises c o m e to mind. But it's because I've been thinking precisely the opposite. It's so hot. If anyone tried to put a coat on me on a day like today, I'd give them a real piece of my mind. Outside the window, the virgin trees are bathed in sunlight. Even though it's the end of the school day, I still have to narrow my eyes against the sun's strong rays. Squinting, I can just make out the chapel in the distance. It really is a magnificent chapel. It just oozes history. Well, of course, this is a distinguished missionary school built in 1870. <laughs> St. a n g r e i k u m Academy. A school surrounded by dense forests and high walls. I move my gaze from the window to the ceiling of the hallway, wondering how long has passed now since I arrived. Only three months. Huh. It feels like I've been. Boarding here for ages, having transferred in a part way through the term, but not that much time has actually passed. I'm quite surprised. Voiced upon this school by my parents. What with my legs, I haven't been able to attend classroom lessons. Back then, I had played a little prank while returning some books I had borrowed from the library. She was the one who figured it out. My bookworm buddy, the face of our little library sprite, floats before my eyes. Speaking of figuring things out, I am reminded of the seven mysteries she told me about, another instance of her playing detective. <laughs> The Seven Mysteries, The Tale of Bloody Mary, that gave me a real laugh. The whole situation had been so laughable, the phrase much ado about nothing springs to mind. 
My bookworm buddy was always getting herself mixed up in those sort of things. Right. I had also let a hand when she was assailed by that weirdo student president. And I had helped investigate the truth behind that Yatsushiro incident, which had been quite unbefitting of this peaceful academy. The results of my investigation? Yet another comedy of errors. I smile to myself and look up at the ceiling as I think back on our efforts to resolve that incident. My bookworm buddy had been deadly serious. And our class president has earnestly offered for her own ridiculous deduction. And the other. I click my tongue as my thoughts turn to our classmate who disappeared with the spring. She left without giving a second thought to the feelings of those she's left behind. I don't particularly care myself, but for her... Let's go pay her a visit. Just picturing her irritated expression is making me feel the heat even more. I put my hands to the rims of my wheelchair and push it forward. The rubber tires squeak as I make my way down the corridor. On my lap is the book I'd borrowed from the library, and the pressure of it on my thighs, through my skirt, is making me sweat. I should have known better than to borrow a biography. As someone who believes that life is just a matter of killing time, I'd always vowed that biographies, written records of that time-wasting, were the one thing I'd never read, but... My bookworm buddy had recommended it so fervently that I'd inadvertently found myself borrowing and reading it. It was a non-fiction title by Cal Gilmore. It turned out to be quite a disturbing tale, and as I read it, I wondered at how one family could suffer such bad luck until, by the end, I had passed beyond pity to a state of amazement. Her taste is as good as mine. She may look like a graceful young maiden, but she recommends the most shocking books. Although, maybe she's just a voracious reader. When it comes to books and other biographies, I'm the same. Before I know it, I've arrived before the library. Since I'm reclining back in my wheelchair, I lean forward and put my hand to the doorknob. Swoosh. A window must be open somewhere, as when I open the door, it creates a thorough draft. And my hair flutters in the breeze. It feels good. It smells like dust and damp and years of passing. My favorite smell. I close the door behind me and I go over to the desk to return the book I'd borrowed. At first, I hadn't noticed her, but... It's there that I find my bookworm buddy, staring fixedly at a metronome as though it's her first time seeing the inner workings of a clock. Shirahane Suo. Suo Shirahane. She stares at the device despondently, looking like she's just now realized the truth behind things. I murmur her name to myself and quietly move my wheelchair to her. With a whoosh, the breeze blows through the room again, ruffling her beautiful long hair. Her skin is so pale it's almost translucent, and the melancholic cast of her pretty delicate features only serves to heighten its impact. Anyone would agree she's the sprite of the library. Yup. The words had been half in jest, but seeing her like this, she really does have an otherworldly beauty to her. Yup. <laughs> like she stepped from the pages of a fairy tale into real life. Maybe I should try growing my hair out too. This thought strikes me as her long black hair sways in the breeze. I've never been jealous of another girl's look. 
but the sight of Shirahane's hair almost elicits a sigh from my lips. That fine and glossy black hair is a true symbol of femininity. Imagining myself with long hair, I have the crazy idea that my own naturally unruly hair would have me looking like Medusa from the Greek legends. And I shake my head with a wry smile. My movements cause my wheelchair to squeak, and Shirahane blinks as though waking from a dream, then forces a smile. Did you come to hang out? <laughs> Don't call me that, it doesn't feel right. She giggles slightly. Oh, I miss them. My name is Erika Yaigaki. The name that this girl figured out. I address Shirahane's questioning look. I finished reading the biography you recommended, so I came to return it. Oh, that was fast. Uh, what did you think? Did you like it? She asked me this with a forced smile that banishes her previous gloomy expression like it was never even there. I placed the book on top of the desk. I couldn't stop reading it, so sure, it was pretty interesting. But I feel like reading an action-adventure novel next, something that won't depress me. Action adventure. How about Shakespeare? I'd recommend King Lear. Isn't that a tragedy? <laughs> I parry Shirahane's rare joke and she covers her mouth with her hand as she laughs daintily. And one of the four great tragedies at that. Wait, what are the other ones? Is it just within like Shakespeare's uh, books or just in general? <laughs> I think the only other uh, thing that I can think of is probably was it Macbeth? There was also another one that I read in high school. It was Hamlet, something along those lines. I find myself spellbound by the sight of Shirahane's silky black hair swishing over her shoulder as she smiles. My eyes are following its flow when... Oh, uh, do I have dust on my shoulder? She asks me. No, I was just wondering how hot your neck must be with that long hair of yours, now that the rainy season's passed and it's finally summer. You're right, but since we're in our summer uniforms now... She rubs her upper arms, now bare, and smiles melancholically. Seeing Shirahane in her summer uniform and wearing that unnatural smile, I feel like I've caught a glimpse of the sorrow of time's passing. Of the anguish of those empty days that have passed since she disappeared. Of the MTA partner who should be here with us right now. No, this doesn't suit me. I was starting to act unlike myself. Being around you does strange things to me. What do you mean? Exactly what I said. Anyways, I'm gonna find a good book. 
I stop Shirahane as she starts towards the bookshelves. I'll look for something myself. I'll take your recommendation next time. I bite back the words of consolation that has risen in my throat and wheel myself over to the modern fiction's shelves. When I open the window in my room, the rays of the evening sun filter in along the cool along with the air outside, which is finally starting to cool. It's hot, but at least it isn't humid. Perhaps because the academy is situated in a forest, the heat is dry and the humidity is low. After a while spent gazing out through the open window at the vermilion sky, I notice that my hot bedroom is also beginning to cool. Now then, what to do? There's still a while until bath time. Checking the clock, I still I see that it's still a while before Sister Basquiat comes to help me bathe. So... I guess I'll read the new book I've borrowed. But glancing at the book I've tossed on my bed, the memory of the biography I've just read lingers in my mind. I want to leave it a little longer before starting something new. As I'm gazing at the cover, all of a sudden, I hear something that sounds like a faint scream. Or a nail scratching at a chalkboard. I turn my wheelchair in the direction the noise is coming from, somewhere beyond the open window. Wait, it's the voice. Is the choir club practicing? Straining my ears, I realize that it's actually the sound of someone singing. It's quiet, like a radio turned down low, and yet the voice reverberates in my ears and in my heart. Is it because the melody is so sad? Yeah. <laughs> This can't be the choir club. In summer, my window is open whenever I'm in my room. I've never heard singing before, though. It's strange for it to reach this far. I whisper, then smile to myself. The grin that my bookworm buddy would call my cat smile. Maybe I'll go take a look. It'll kill some time. Guided by my ears, I put my hands to the hand rims of my chair and head off to catch a glimpse of the owner of the voice. Somehow, as I push my wheelchair along in pursuit of that melody, I start to develop a strange feeling inside. The voice is faint but clear, sad and yet sweet and I find myself stopping to listen. But this voice... It reminds me of my bookworm buddy's Amite partner who disappeared in the spring. Mayuri Kosaka. She performed a solo of the Tota Polkra S at the Feast of the Assumption. Her voice had an otherworldly quality to it, a real sense of power. I don't know why she disappeared, and I don't particularly want to. But for her, nothing can be done about it. I shake my head and hurry on towards the voice. It seems to be coming from behind the dormitory building. There are nothing special compared to the magnificent row of cherry trees leading up from the school gate, but there are a few trees behind the dormitory, too, and it's there. This voice. No, it can't be. The voice leads me on, and suddenly they're before my eyes. <laughs> 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 
眠る茨のトゲに囲まれてる私いつかは目覚めさせてくれる柔らかなあなたのぬくもり is Mayuri Kosaka. The girl sings on illuminated by the blood red lights of the dying sun. The length of her hair, her stature, her very aura, it's all the same. No. I'd call Shirahane otherworldly, but this girl is just as beautiful. I feel like I'm watching a scene from a movie. Is she older than me? Her mature face is perfectly shaped like a doll's. Spirit of the Cherry Tree A line from a book I once read come to mind. A being not of this world. A voice that squeezes at the heart. There is no expression on the girl's face. Is it just that I can't read her emotions? It's as though she's singing simply out of duty. It feels mournful. For some reason, there's something sinister about the magnificent spectacle. The sound of a falling twig crackling under the wheel of my chair resounds in the still air and the girl stops singing. She then turns towards me slowly, as though coming back to reality. Dare. Who are you? She asks me in this sharp voice, quite opposite in the tone of her singing. Watashi wa... I'm a student here. Don't you know it's rude to start questioning people before even giving out your name? The girl stares back at me intently as though trying to peer into my soul. After getting a sense of her demeanor from her voice and after seeing those eyes of hers, I had automatically spoken quite harshly. So. So you were eavesdropping, were you? She doesn't answer my question and continues staring at me like I'm a piece of dirt on the sole of her shoe. I don't like the way she's looking at me. Her eyes speak her annoyance. It reminds me of how I used to be, and it makes me feel strange. I was on my way home, and I just happened to overhear. Anyway, did you not hear my question? The girl looks over to where her things are leaning against the trunk of the cherry tree, as though she hasn't heard me at all. Oi. This isn't a great start to my first day. I heard that this academy accepted only the best students, but... Her mutterings reach my ears clearly and I find myself getting more pissed off than usual. Yeah, for real. How can you say that about Erica, man? And you think you're one of the best, do you? I get the feeling you're looking down on me for my supposed eavesdropping. I'll have you know your singing wasn't all that. Something like... Something like emotion finally crosses her face at my response. I much prefer it to the mask she's been wearing before. But she quickly banishes it and bends down to retrieve her bag. <laughs> What's the matter? You ignoring me? Whoa there. I make it a point not to engage in conversation with people of low intelligence. I can't help but grin at this outright rudeness. The audacity. 
オージー・シンプソンを有罪だと言い切るタイプだなここへは恨まれて逃げてきたのかい And my intelligence is already decided. I bet you're the type who'd declare OJ Simpson guilty without a scrap of evidence. Have you run away here to escape some kind of grudge? A distinct flash of emotion lights up her eyes at that. An irritation in her doll like features that she makes no effort to hide. Then she slowly looks me over from my eyes to my face, my body, my wheelchair, and my useless legs. あなたは卑怯者ね。You're a coward. She says this right into my ear. And a baby, she continues. <laughs> I spin around in anger, but she's already stalking off. She doesn't spare me a backward glance. Her silhouette is swallowed up by the twilight. Sorry, Kosaka. I murmur aloud to my friend who disappeared with the spring. You're a saint compared to her. グリム童話にカエルの王様と呼ばれる一編がある日本ではカエルの王子様として知られる物語だ王女が感謝の印としてカエルにキスをして魔法使いの呪いが解けカエルは人の姿に戻り王女と結ばれるというものしかし本来の話の筋は知られている物語ほど優しくはない王女が泉に金のマリを落としカエルは友達になってくれるのなら拾ってこようと申し出る王女はその条件を飲むもカエルと友人になろうとせず城へと去ってしまうこれから始まる物語は去った者を待つ哀れなカエルのお話。